Hi, I'm Nelson DeMille, and our book is titled The Deserter. Hi, I'm Alex DeMille, and I'm the co-author of The Deserter. The Deserter is about two Army criminal investigators, uh, male, female, Scott Brody and Maggie Taylor, who are tasked with uh, finding and apprehending and bringing back to stateside to face justice, um, Kyle Mercer, a special forces officer who deserted his remote outpost in Afghanistan a few years back. So our two heroes are sent to Caracas and they, don't, they have very little to work with. They, um, they know where he was cited and that's about it. And they're going to an unstable society with a hostile government and no support. Uh, the, the idea was uh, over two years old and it uh, was inspired by um, the Bo Bergdahl case. Bo Bergdahl was a deserter, uh, army deserter, deserter in Afghanistan, got captured by the Taliban, spent about two years with the Taliban, I got released. So this is, you know, uh, uh, kind of a chase and escape and a, and a whodunit. But more than that, it's the why of it. Why did this man do what he did? And I think that's what keeps the reader kind of hanging. It was challenging to set this book in Venezuela. As far as research goes, um, it was a combination of reading books and talking to a handful of Venezuelan expats, as well as uh, one a uh, guy who still is in Caracas and he's part of the nonviolent uh, political dissident movement. And that was really, really valuable. Um, I was able to get an on the ground perspective. I was planning on going, um, but things got worse and worse. And I realized that this would be a bad idea. And I, the, people, the Venezuelan expats I spoke to said, don't go. You're going to get, you know, you might get kidnapped at the airport. And you won't even get any research done first. So <laughs> I, um, I didn't go, but that made me extra, um, diligent and trying to do as much research as possible to make sure I got this place right. As far as the logistics of, of collaboration, you don't use a computer. I don't use a computer. So I was kind of the master record keeper. I had a, a Word document that I was working from and then I would be emailing portions of that to his secretaries and they would be printing it out and he would be reading it and he would be usually, he would be editing with a, a pencil. Right. And then I'd get scans back of the pages. I write longhand. I find the process easier for me. Thoughts flow more freely, maybe. Uh, I find it quicker than typing for me. So it was, you know, two different, two different technologies. One was lead pencil and the other one was uh, computers. But he was able to read by handwriting, which most that people was, can. That was a unique skill. From <laughs> right. You, you remember how bad my handwriting was. <laughs> and, uh, a couple of bumps in the beginning, but it was really more logistic than than stylistic. Once we got the logistics down, you know, thank God for emails and uh, uh, when you co-authored in the old days, you had to put your manuscript or your chapter in the mail and wait wait five days before it reached the other co-author. Um, then you know, I used to fax it too. But logistically, you know, we figured it out, and then stylistically, I think we figured it out. Yeah. Right, our characters in there. I think mid thirties, would you say? Yeah. So you know, I'm challenged a little bit with that. The guy's in his mid thirties. She's in her mid thirties. Alex is in his mid thirties. So he kind of ironed out some of the uh, the dialogue and some of the expressions that might not be current today. And this is it's a good thing. You see, with uh, older writers, sometimes they get stuck in a time period in terms of the language. The language changes. I mean, you can still believe what you believe and write it the way you see it, but the language is dynamic. So you've got to kind of uh, uh, change some of the words, change some of the language.